Hi there, and welcome to this latest episode of Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie, and I'm delighted um, to have uh, India's first, first professional blogger and uh, a huge Google Apps Script contributor, uh, Amit Agmal, from uh, who you might know on Twitter as Labnol. Hello, Amit. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for having so, me on your show. Well, it's going to be a pleasure, and I've been following your work for so many years. So, and um, when I, it, you have so many interesting projects, and I think we could spend many an episode of uh, totally unscripted <laughs> talking about them. But a particular one that you've published recently that really caught my eye was um, you you published a solution for uh, selling digital goods. Um, with Google Apps Script, so using PayPal as a payment processor and Google Sheets for kind of record management and kind of uh, just kind of the workflow. And um, yeah. it, it looks a, a fascinating example that's pulling together various services. And I thought, let's get Amit on and um, to, to share a bit of insight into, into how that project was developed. So yeah. Amit, what, what have you got for us? So basically, uh, I have built a couple of add-ons around Google Apps Script so that adds more productivity features to G Suite services like Gmail, Google Drive, and so on. So most of my add-ons that I have, they're built around the freemium model. So you, you can just download an add-on from the Chrome store and use it for free. And there are some advanced features. So if you want to use it for, more, for more extended use, you just pay for a service and you pay by an annual license and then you can continue using it now what happened was previously i built this store um, on digital inspiration this is basically a wordpress website where you can find the list of all my add-ons and uh, what i was doing was i was using something called woocommerce so basically it's a e-commerce plugin for wordpress so that makes it easy very easy for you to sell stuff and with WooCommerce, what you can do is you can plug in your various payment gateways like Stripe or PayPal and there are a host of others. Like in India, you have others which are specific to India. And so anybody can just go to your website. They can add the product to the cart, hit the checkout button, and uh, your uh, the product gets delivered to them. In this case, the license code gets delivered to them. Uh, the problem I was facing with this approach was that uh, the biggest problem was like if somebody is using my add-on inside, say, a Google spreadsheet or inside Gmail website, they'll have to come to my website to complete the checkout process. So that takes a few extra steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, I'm sure I would be losing customers in the way. And uh, recently, I was exploring the uh, PayPal developer website and what they have released recently is something called smart buttons now what are smart buttons if you have ever used the stripe checkout uh, buttons basically when you click the button automatically a pop-up appears so you can just enter your credit card details fill in your email address hit submit and the order is completed so everything happens in line you don't have to leave the the seller's website and so the experience is also good, and I think the conversions are also higher. So what I have done for my add-ons is I've tried something similar. Unfortunately, Stripe, I'm based in India, and uh, mm -hmm. Stripe has a very limited number of users in India. They are still in private, I think. So I was very happy when I saw that PayPal has released something similar. So it's very similar to Stripe, so you just press the Buy button, and a pop-up appears, and you're done. So I integrated this with my add-ons. So now if say somebody is uh, using my add-on and they have a sidebar open, they can see the PayPal buttons. If they press the payment button, they see a pop inside the Google spreadsheet interface itself where they can just key in their credit card details and they're good. So that's the whole idea I was using. And when I created this, I thought that maybe more people may like this because technically it's not a very challenging project uh, and everything the whole workflow right from showing the paypal buttons to what happens when somebody completes the payment what do you what do we do behind the scenes like uh, 
checking whether the order is complete or not, checking whether the payment that we have received actually matches with the payment that we were expecting. And then doing the other part, which is sending the products to the buyer. We get the email from the PayPal order, obviously. And then also issuing an invoice. Now, this invoice is the interesting part because what we have set up is we have set up a Google spreadsheet that has formulas. So based on the quantity and based on the tax rate and based on the item price, automatically we calculate the full price and then use the Google Drive APIs to convert that spreadsheet template into a PDF file. And then get, that gets attached to your uh, email message and sent as an attachment to the buyer. So this whole workflow is completely written in app script. That's some impressive, impressive stuff. Were there any, um, so uh, is, is it like a lot of other app script projects? You've got the idea um, and then you just have to spend lots and lots of time kind of fleshing out the kind of the, the user interface side. Is, is there much actual codes behind the scenes that, that's required for the, the processing side? So, uh, so there are two parts of it. Uh, one is uh, when this is how the, the way PayPal works is like when you complete a transaction, PayPal has this concept of webhooks. Now, web, webhooks are essentially URLs. So every time a transaction is completed, PayPal will call a particular URL to donate that uh, a particular transaction has been completed. And we use uh, one of the many PayPal APIs to get the transaction details, the customer details, and then complete the order. So this webhook is the part that initiates the entire workflow. And this webhook thing is, this webhook is written entirely in AppScript. So basically in AppScript, what you can do is you can write code and publish it as a web app. When I mean a web app, it's essentially a web page that anybody can use. And uh, we also have the concept of uh, anonymous usage in AppScript. So you can publish a web app with anonymous access. So that means anyone who is not logged into a Google account or even who doesn't have a Google account can access your web page. So what we do is we basically publish our app script as a web app with anonymous access. And PayPal is calling this web, web book that to initiate the whole transaction, the whole workflow. Now, when I build this stuff inside the app script, obviously I was the only user. And so I could write a bit of code and I knew how it works. And so uh, there was no, absolutely no front end because I knew how, how I could do mm. everything inside the back end code. But uh, when I thought that maybe other people, so somebody who has a store for selling PDF eBooks, or maybe MP3 songs, or uh, suppose somebody has a personal trainer and they're looking for a way to, you know, get payments from their clients through an easy interface. Everybody could use it. So I'm giving all these examples because these people have zero technical background. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to offer was an interface that is very intuitive and requires absolutely zero coding. And yet they should be able to set up the entire thing in um, five minutes or so. So I had two options. I could go up with a, I could build a, some sort of a complex web form where people can go and fill in their PayPal details, the items they want to sell and all these things. That was one way. What I thought was probably uh, let's use Google Sheets as an interface for getting data. Because YouTube, uh, Google Spreadsheets is using the standard spreadsheet format, which everyone is familiar with. And you have all these options like color coding, formatting, you can format alternate rows and so, so, so and so forth. So it's very, very easy for people to figure out what they have to do you now. So for instance, I can attach tooltips to a cell so they, so they know exactly what I have to do to a, what I, ex data exactly I have to enter in a cell. And the best part of spreadsheets is that you can add custom menus. So if there are some actions that they want to perform, which cannot be done with simple formulas, we can attach them through menus. So that's the approach I took. So I basically I created a simple spreadsheet where they could fill in all their PayPal credentials. And the next spreadsheet would have details about all the products that they're trying to sell. Now in this, uh, we had two options. One is they could sell services where they're not selling an actual product, but a service 
and they're only using this workflow to get payments from the client. But the other part was where they're actually selling a digital digital product like a PDF ebook or an MP3 file. So in that case, what we did was we used Google Drive as a place for hosting those files. And when somebody is describing a product that they want to sell via this workflow, they can point us to the exact file that's in Google Drive that they wish to sell. So at the time of uh, sending the order to the client, what we did was we pulled the, the, the file, the document, whatever it is from Google Drive and send it as an attachment to the email. So the interface that we used was Google Spreadsheet. And I think it has made very, very easy because it's very familiar, very intuitive for everyone. Um, so, and uh, you know, looking at your code, you've, you're obviously using other services like um, Drive App. Um, um, uh, and I notice as well that you're you're opting to use mail app instead instead of of Gmail uh, as a service. Is that because of the um, the new restrictions on Gmail service? So uh, Gmail has added these recent uh, restrictions where if you are building an add-on around that uses any of these Gmail scopes, we have to get it verified from Google before releasing it to the world. But in our case, what we've done is because we are giving, we are allowing users to create a webhook from a script. So we cannot take go with the add-on approach because the add-ons would always give us same URL, right? If we publish something as a web app. So here, what we are doing is we are attaching the code to a spreadsheet, and the users then copy the spreadsheet, the entire spreadsheet with the code on their computers, on in their Google Drive. So when they publish it as a web app, it's actually their own code. Right. So uh, we are uh, the when the users publish an app as a web app, they do get that authorization screen saying that this app is not verified. But because they are the owner of that code and everything is in their Google Drive, so there are no uh, if they just press that I'm okay with that. I, I don't have a problem with this app not verified screen. I'm okay. They can continue with the uh, publishing process. Because it's not published as an add-on, it's, it's there in their Google Drive, the code itself. And um, so, if anyone wants to to to, to use the, this uh, framework that you you've developed, um, yeah. is it, so you mentioned that you 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 know one of your focuses is making it easy for anyone to 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 set up. Um, yeah. So uh, if you go to, I have created a website where I list all the details. So if you go to a website called digitalgoods.dev, uh, basically uh, what I have done is the, you have a demo page where you can just try how this everything works. And in case you want to set this up for your own Google Drive, you can just go to digitalgoods.dev slash copy. And this will add the, this will create a copy of the Google spreadsheet in your Google Drive. And then you can just follow the instructions, publish that script associated with the Google Sheet as a web app, and pass it as a webhook to your PayPal uh, app, and you're good to go. And the same spreadsheet you can use to manage products in the sense you can define which all products you want to sell and which files in Google Drive you want to attach with these products. And if you go to the menu items, you also have an option to generate the embed code. So what happens is once you define the products that you want to sell, you can generate the, the HTML uh, embed codes that you can paste in your website and your product is dive in like five minutes. And in terms of, so uh, you've obviously spent a lot of time solving, <laughs> you know, working this all out and, um, you know, developing the web hook for, yeah. for PayPal. Uh, it is is the solution free for anyone to use or is is there a, a payment to use the service so, that you've created so basically you can like try uh, if you make a copy of the sheet it uh, works for like 10 days and yeah then if you want to sell more products there is a nominal fee i think 29 or something per year okay mm -hmm. but if anyone is part of this um, this uh, live event, they can just send me an email and you can send them a premium license. That should not be a problem. So you can just study yeah. how it all works. Yeah, that's great. And in terms of development, um, 
so in previous shows, uh, we we've looked at you know the various development uh, options. And so obviously the the script editor, um, you know, I know yeah. that you've been using Google Apps Script long enough that you, you'll be very familiar with the script editor. Are are you finding that like other developers, you are now doing more offline code development with the tools that are available? So uh, I think it's almost it's all it's been almost a decade since AppScript was launched, or probably yeah. nine years. And I think I've been writing code since day one. And uh, initially, what I was doing was like everyone does it: you go to the script editor, the online script editor, and start writing code. And it's very very good for you know when you have small scripts that are you just want to write the code and publish them, you're good to go. But as your projects become bigger and bigger, it's very, very difficult to manage them inside the app script uh, editor. The other drawback with that is like it only works when you're connected to the internet, so you can't work while you you can't code while you're offline. Yeah. And uh, there's so many other things that you can't you know modularize your code. And the biggest drawback that I'm seeing is that you can't use any of the modern JavaScript features that are available in all the um, new new browsers, but they're unfortunately not available in AppScript yet. I heard that they are planning to release them, but I'm not sure what's the timeline like. So to give you an example, you have things like arrow functions, mm -hmm. or you have destructuring. So they make uh, your code yeah. so concise and readable, and unfortunately, none of these are available in AppScript, the online version. So what I have done, the way I am building all my stuff now is using Visual Studio Code. And uh, we, uh, we use something called uh, the Babel Transpiler, which uh, takes, because AppScript still can't understand the code written in ES6 and the new versions of JavaScript. So essentially what Babel does, it, it takes all your modern JavaScript code and transforms it into a ES 2015 version that probably AppScript can understand. And uh, then we are also using Webpack, which is like uh, it, it compiles all your code and creates a nice production bundle. So it, you just get one file that you can push to your AppScript editor. And it does all the other things as well, like you know, minimizing code and mm -hmm. uh, reducing the size. And, this, and if, you have, if you have HTML and CSS files uh, in your code, they they can tend to you can inline the code and reduces the file size and all the other features are there and the best part about uh, vs code is that you can bring uh, es lint and prettier and you know it integrates with github so it the development becomes very very smooth in that case and uh, in case other people are interested i actually the way i develop code I've created a starter kit. It's available on GitHub. If you just uh, search for AppScript starter kit, you can find it. So basically what you have to do is you just download that repository and just do an NPM install to install all the necessary packages and dependencies. And you can start coding in VS Code. There is absolutely no build configuration required. And uh, Google has released uh, something uh, called Clasp, which uh, so class is basically a command line utility that makes it very easy for you to interact with all your app script projects through the command line. So internally in this starter kit, we are using app script. Uh, uh, in this, uh, internally in the starter kit, we are using this class to push and pull order and stuff to the app script editor. So it makes development a lot, lot smoother. Well, we were uh, fortunate as well to have Grant Timmerman, who's the the Google product lead on Clasp on the yeah, previous yeah, show. Yeah. So um, it seems that that seems to be, yeah. I think in terms of, um, you know, particularly in the enterprise environment, I I I, I feel that's a way a lot of developers are going now in terms of, yeah. um, you know, uh, setting up their their kind of. Um, production and development environments. Yeah. Um, um, do you, it makes do you... sense, yeah, because if you have a large team, you have a standard format, standard yeah. coding format, standard way of beautifying or formatting your code. So if a new team member joins with an existing leaves, you know, it's very easy. Everything becomes very easy. Yeah. It's great as well that you've got, I, I did see that 
that um, uh, started uh, Kit on on GitHub. And I know, um, I think Eric Kalida even was promoting it. Um, yeah, yeah, he has been kind enough to tweet about it as well. Yeah. So that got got in some new users as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, it seems uh, to be um, as we have you, and um, uh, given your you know the the amount of experience you you have with Google Apps Script and um, related Google products. I'm just wondering, do you have a favorite Google Apps Script project um, that 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 you know it top, it's at the top of your mind and, and from from your own uh, development that you you just think is the the bee's yeah. knees, the greatest. Um, Thing so that you've uh, come up with. I, I can talk about something that I have created, I think. Uh, so yeah, I think yeah. in the last uh, four or five years, I think I've built about 10 or 12 add-ons. And some of these are like really popular with a few hundred thousand users. But the one that I, I think like the most is called Document Studio. Mm -hmm. And Document Studio is essentially, uh, uh, it's basically a way to automatically generate documents using templates. So you have all your data in a spreadsheet. You specify a template, and that template could be a word, a, a document, a spreadsheet, or even a Google slide. And it uh, creates all the necessary files in the format that you require. So you could generate PDFs, you could generate ebooks, or whatever prefer, uh, uh, format you prefer. And then we also integrate the, it with Google Cloud Print. So when somebody uh, prints, uh, creates a document, it, it can be configured to be printed automatically. And then we can also set up uh, instant sharing. So for instance, as soon as a document is printed and um, you wanted to share it with your particular client or your colleague, we have that built in. So it has lots and lots of features. And uh, it doesn't have hundreds and thousands of users, but I absolutely yeah. love that because it does so many things yeah. and I know people are using it to generate school certificates and recently I think in our local community there was a there was a game where they had to generate these lotto numbers uh, these uh, lottery yeah. kind of tickets which unique numbers so we kind of use that to generate it nice PDF so that was a good use case and uh, that is the one that I really really like but uh, in terms of functionality I have a uh, I don't call mail merge with attachments that is really popular. But uh, in inside of Google Forms, you have something called email notifications for forms. Yeah. And uh, one of the unique features that add on has is like you can route um, emails to different users in your team or to your clients based on the form answers. Mm, that's very clever. So, so, so if somebody's so if suppose in the Google form you're asking for the city. And if somebody says New York, we send it to the New York team. If somebody says Dallas, we send it to the Dallas team. And uh, this is my only uh, Google Apps Script project where the interface is written in React. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So because it's very very because it's kind of a complex interface. Uh, we are storing everything in JSON, and then we we get the JSON, and then we render the these and or conditions. So it's very difficult to mm -hmm. build something in uh, vanilla JavaScript or even jQuery. So we use yeah. React for it. And we and uh, it definitely required a lot of tooling and a lot of configuration because I don't think there's anything ready-made where you can just build a React project and put it into App Script. But it was challenging. But I think the end result is very good. And I'm also planning to release this as a starter kit. So probably in case in the future, right. if somebody wants yeah. to build a React project and use it for HTML service in App Script, they can use that. Yeah. And that, it's really interesting. I, I, I'm aware of people using other frameworks, like um, particularly Angular, but uh, I, I'm not, I haven't heard many examples of people using React. And that sounds like yeah. um, uh, a, a great example that for people to learn from as well in yeah. terms of future stuff obviously you know we're on the back of um google cloud next was last week um and it didn't there wasn't a huge i didn't come across yeah. a huge number of um, google apps script related um, news but i i just wondered it in terms of your own interests were you 
was there anything in particular that you're 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 looking at that you can talk about right now that um it, and it doesn't have to be google apps script i know you've got uh, a wide variety of interests so but you're one of these people i know that you're always doing interesting stuff so we can get a little tip of what what's next from your um your wonderful mind i think that'd be quite nice so um, even I was expecting uh, some app script related announcements from Google Next, but I was also a bit disappointed. So anyway, so uh, uh, but anyway, the the other Google products that really interest me are uh, is the new um, the cloud run thing that they have released. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can write code in practically any language. You can use Go, you can use Node, whatever language you prefer. And then just use a Docker file and then push it to the cloud and it runs. Yeah. So it's like, uh, in, I think you have cloud functions where you can only run in specific environments, but with the, with the cloud run, I think all those limits are removed. So for instance, Google has this interesting project called Puppeteer, which is like headless version of Chrome. So you can use it for screenshots, for generating PDF files, a lot of other things. So now I uh, the, the possibilities are endless, right? Because mm. I can just put everything in a Docker file and run it on the cloud. So, and yeah. it can be released uh, uh, with the HTTP access, so anybody can use it. So, I think this is one project that really excites me now. And uh, the next thing that I'm exploring now is to build something around YouTube because YouTube is really, really popular. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering maybe some Google Sheets or slides add on around YouTube, maybe where a service where probably if you have a Google slide and if you have YouTube, you know, yeah, you yeah. have a conference and you, if, some, if, a, if, a, if somebody navigates a slide automatically, the video shifts forward or backward based on the slide content something like this, so it's automatically synced. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a, a way for, say, users to you know publish podcasts that yeah. go as videos yeah. on YouTube and they also go as audio podcasts somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. things like these are in my mind. Let's see, because <laughs> the problem is I'm the only person who is writing code, <laughs> writing my blog also. So And then I have to offer support also to all my existing customers. So it takes a lot of time. But yeah, I'm tr always trying new things. Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to, with interest to uh, see how you, some of those ideas develop. Personally, I would love to see um, a podcast solution. I think I'd yeah. be uh, at the front of the queue for that one. Um, oh, yes. Given I, I do the occasional podcast as well as these videos, um, yeah. uh, something that would um, push out um, to the various services as well and just kind of yeah. stream that yeah. whole process. Yeah. Um, we, we've got a question come in. So, um, uh, Vinit has asked, um, have you tried APIs from other pay payment gateways instead of PayPal? So I think you mentioned Stripe, um, which you had a look at, but. Yeah, so uh, I haven't explored uh, Stripe APIs yet because uh, in our country, India, Stripe is, has very limited availability. Mm. But yes, uh, a lot of my international customers have asked if the digital goods solution can be integrated with Stripe. And yes, probably that's in my to-do list as well. So I'm just looking for a way to easily integrate Stripe also into the same platform. Mm. Are there, I'm not familiar with other payment services. Are, are there others that you've looked at? I guess PayPal and Stripe probably cover uh, most of the marketplace. So Vinit is still listening. Um, Actually, the, uh, I've seen that. The, the trust factor with PayPal and Stripe is really, really high because when people, I think, see these logos, they're very willing to share the credit card numbers because yeah. they know that credit card won't be shared with the actual seller. Right? Yeah. So the trust factor is very, very high. That is the reason I concentrated mm -hmm. on these services, but probably I'll expand going forward if enough people have interest in that. I guess as well, it's um, as they are APIs, the, the you know, the... App script can can make a URL fetch. I suppose yeah. the issue is with webhooks. Sometimes, um, whether or not they follow the redirects that are in published um, web apps, where some, yeah. I, I know that can be a, an issue. But um, I guess if they exist, <laughs> yeah, generally they're, uh, they're accessible. 
Yeah, I think that's all we need. If they have APIs and they allow us to mm -hmm. access via the normal uh, URL fetch, I think we are good to go. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm conscious of time, and I know you've got plenty more blog posts and projects to develop. I would like to thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Totally Unscripted. Um, what we'll do is, um, as part of the show notes, we'll put together uh, a nice links uh, bundle so you can find out uh, the original um, posts where Amit describes selling digital goods and some of the other things that he's he's mentioned as well. So the starter kit, or um, uh, if you're doing uh, using, you're interested in using VS Code and things like that. Yeah. Um, Amit. Being an absolute pleasure to have you, and um, hopefully we'll get you back on yeah. uh, another day soon. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for having me on your show, and you're doing some really good effort. <laughs> so all Thank the you. best. Thank bye you. Bye bye.